welcome and welcome back to the channel. Woo, what a rough week, man. How's everybody doing out there, man? Uh, uh, what's the day? Uh, the day's date is the third already, guys. We are in May. <laughs> May, I remember it was January, it seemed like three weeks ago. So, guys, real quick, all I want to do is jump on and tackle. I got a chance to upload um out of seven days. It was it's been seven days since last Sunday, right? I got a chance to upload seven, eight, nine, ten. I think ten videos, or maybe twelve. So, because it was only seven days and twelve videos, there's a chance or likelihood I may have uploaded two in one particular day. And I think that was the case on a on a couple of them. I think some days out of last week, I got a chance to upload two. All right, <laughs> and I told y'all the reason behind that was a uh, uh, trying to stop the bleeding, man. Ever since the uh, epidemic started. Um, uh, you know, the, the views went down and the, uh, the watch time. Okay. Really, um, if you monetize, you really, really interested in watch time. Okay. So, which means you got to change your strategy because last model strategy post or pre epidemic, uh, you could, you could be reckless and still be, uh, successful. Okay. You can put out any old video. I mean, and, uh, the viewers was plentiful, uh, post post epidemic so it really didn't matter so uh i'm trying to stop the bleeding so i was uh, i think one day i uploaded three or even four now it was all part one part two part three and uh they're not little three minute videos guys these are at least 10 minutes and higher so trying to stop the bleeding i know some of you guys know exactly what i'm talking about so before without further ado i'm gonna jump right into um uh, some of these questions um uh, i've been getting a lot of questions I um uh, one of the particular videos I uh, uploaded was uh concerning the uh, the three six all right the three six engine uh actually doing the uh, the the phaser camshaft and the phaser I got a chance to do well I did it a while back but I actually filmed it and I I'm sorry I couldn't find the SD card with the footage on it my my 2012 minivan it got wrecked hit in the wreck and uh it's gone now but I got a chance to get film that work while i was replacing i was actually replacing the head but i figured i'd shorten that video up to show the replacement process of a camshaft or a cam phaser i showed what tools you may need and uh how it's done on bank two i didn't get around to doing bank one i'm gonna upload that video uh later okay so uh i i just have to go through and edit that um so Without further ado, I'm going to go dive into some of these questions off that video. Oh, Nathan Rudolph. What's up, man? Hey, where can I get a cheap, valve, good valve body? On Oh, I know who you are. You're the guy with the the 200 uh, under $400. Man, good luck trying to get one under $400. My dealer told me $900 for a remand. <laughs> that ain't just your dealer. That's about, that's pretty much all of them. Um, that's, um, that's the going rate, man. Uh, I think in our dealership, they probably $1,000. So as far as finding what's the word you use, a cheap, good valve body, I don't think you're going to be able to pull that off, man. Uh, I, First of all, I don't even know if re, I don't even know. I'm not sure reman companies are even making uh, valve bodies because of uh, the risk factor. That's a ZF transmission. So I don't even know if they have patented uh, rights or they can do that. So I'm not sure, man. Uh, you might not have no choice, buddy. And it's it's high dollar, but you you just really may not have any choice. Reman valve body to a nine that's a nine speed transmission in that 2015 Chrysler 200. Ah, you you might not have a choice, buddy. Um, four hundred dollars is the this the was that under four hundred dollars? Yeah, really good luck with that. I hate to sound harsh to you, buddy, but that's a that's a fact. That's a um, that's a reality. So. Um, now if you get one, um, from like an aftermarket shop, please make sure they offer some type of warranty because, you know, it's, it's something bound to happen. Okay. I'll just have to order off OEM mobile parts. They have it for 600. That, that may be your bet. That's a better route than a, uh, aftermarket remand. I'll say that, uh, Nathaniel Rudolph, I would say that. All right. Uh, guys, I want to jump straight into these questions, but TSG lost reviews. 2001 
or is that I guess that's 2011. You got a P right there. A Dodge Charger V6 won't rev up when cold, but good when it heats up. Won't rev up. Won't rev up. Won't rev up. You put your foot on the gas, and you're telling me nothing happens? Oh, uh, 2001 111 Dodge Charger. Do you? Uh, hold on. Let me jump back to Nick Daniel right quick. Uh, lost reviews. Do you trust the OEM Mopar website? I never used it, man. I've never had a reason to use it. I'm, I'm right there at the dealer, so I'll, I get all my parts uh, uh, straight straight in-house, okay? Um, so I've never used a website. I, I don't. What do you mean by trust? Because I'm sure they carry the same. <laughs> if it's coming from a Mopar website, I'm sure it's an OEM Mopar parts, which will likely carry the same Mopar warranty as, you know, you're getting it out of dealer. Uh, as far as trust, I guess you're assuming if it makes it to you or not, or get to you or not, or because the quality gonna be the same as you know you freshly buying out of dealer. Okay, thanks so much. Yeah, that's that's cool, man. Appreciate you jumping on the stream, man. Uh, hey, thumbs up the video before you head out, man. I appreciate it a lot. Now let me jump back to TSG lost reviews, dude. I, you got a letter or something wrong. You saying I'm hoping you're talking about a 2011 Dodge Charger. V6 won't rev up when cold, but good when it heats up. Uh, only thing rev related <laughs> it, uh, that's that happens in between temperature, meaning hot or cold. Of course, your O2 sensors heat up. Uh, you would we used to use a term called uh, closed loop and open loop. So after you warm up, you're in a whole different strategy, uh, drivability wise. So I'm not sure what do you mean by rev up. You you got me baffled right here. Uh, it won't rev up when cold, but it would when hot. You got the, uh, you got the. Give me a, give me a better description or something. Man. I can't make out what you're trying to say. What's up, Tom? What's going on, baby? What is going on? Uh, ain't that man, Tom? Saying I heard you went back to work, man. Is uh, I hope everything ain't going cool for you, man. <laughs> you know. Okay, Nathan. Yeah. As far as fake wise, yeah, that's what you mean by trust. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I've never used it, so I, I couldn't tell you. So. What's this I hear about the 2.4 Tiger Shark engine used up oil and engine ties up? Engine ties up. The 2.4 Tiger Shark engine uses up oil and the engine ties up. Uh, you obviously talking about that 2.4 multi-air engine. Uh, yeah, they got some problems with oil consumption on their engine. I, I, I had to refrain. Not I had to, but I chose to refrain from discussing it in a lot of my videos because <laughs> I didn't want to put the product in a bad light. You know, that's that engine is that car and that engine. I don't know when that, that uh multi air engine showed up 2004, but I've seen it as early as the 2014 um uh, Chrysler 200s. And yes, they do have some oil consumption issues. Like I said, um, uh, I chose to steer clear of that topic. And boy, if I wasn't working at the dealership or working with Chrysler, I could have plenty of content discussing that issue. <laughs> Woo, boy, 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 boy. But I, I had to choose. I had to make a decision. Choose not. I don't want to put the product in a bad light. And that's exactly what I would be doing. It's bad enough. Uh, like this one guy said, every time I go on your channel, I see three six videos uh ticking, ticking, ticking. That three six must be a piece of junk. It's not that guys, because uh I specialize in a particular brand, meaning Chrysler Dodge Jeep. The bulk of my videos will be on you know whatever i see as opposed to me working in an independent shop you'll get a different topic on a different car any different given day okay not so much when uh you know i can only speak on what i'm seeing or what i'm working on okay in fact today i had to go tackle or i went to tackle a toyota corolla it's simple i mean a belt belt came out there's some oil leaks so but i did film it i ain't let nothing get away from a, a good a good uh a good content video so yeah but i had to steer clear man uh i mean i discussed it with you uh what was your question it says something like um what's this i hear about the two four tiger shot engine users oil yeah uh if you're talking about the multi-air engine uh i assume that's what you're talking about uh yeah they have some oil consumption issue and uh depending on your engine or your warranty uh we simply run in an oil compressed oil consumption test and in the event that it failed the oil consumption test, now there are some parameters. We don't just okay, you need the engine. No, we we're required to change the oil 
verify that it's full, send you on your merry way, have you come back at a certain length of time, and check the level of the oil. Depending on the level, after we check it again, uh, we'll determine or, you know, in our mind, uh, let us know how much, if any, oil the engine is burning. Okay, but yes, that's the problem. Uh, that I own one. Okay, I got a 2017 Cherokee with a 2.4 uh, multi-air engine in it that's burning oil. But, you know, I don't want to put the product in a bad light. I'm sure y'all can understand. It. It's a lot of shit I wish I can talk about, but I would just make Chrysler look bad. And that's not my intention here, guys. Uh, that's not my goal. I mean, we got to keep, in order for a dealership to survive, uh, sales of the product is a big factor. OK, so, you know, if you constantly hearing somebody bashing out a product that you thinking about purchasing, <laughs> if you constantly hearing somebody bashing it, you would probably likely change your mind. And that's not my goal when I make, uh, you know, even on the three six. The only reason I talk about the three six like the way I do, because it's it showed up in 2011. You know, what is that? Eight, nine, ten years ago. So. That engine is already in the hands of a uh, consumer, a lot of consumer. Okay, a lot of owners, minivan owners out there own it. So all I'm doing now is merely helping them maintain their car, not so much uh, swaying their decision one way or the other about purchasing the vehicle. They likely already own it. Okay, but not so much. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to disrupt sales. You know, I'm not real. My channel is not real huge, so. <laughs> It ain't like uh, I ain't like Scotty. I can swear a block of people, you know, into doing something. Don't buy a Toyota. Yeah, I don't have that kind of power. But what little, I don't want to change anybody's mind if they sitting on the sideline thinking they want to buy a Pacifica, things like that. And I, that Pacifica, our new Pacifica in 2020, that's the Generation 3 Pentastar engine. So uh, I have yet to see one of those in the shop getting worked on. Okay. Now I should be speaking on that. Maybe that'll help sales, but you know, the three, six engine has gotten such a bad rap or uh, bad image to where, uh, you know, it's going to be hard to recover, but Christ love, they'll make it happen. I'm sure. All right. I got off track. Where did I leave off at? Okay. What's up with them? Vlad. That was James Ledyard. Vlad Samarin. Hey, man, love your videos. What are common problems with the 2009 through 2016 Jeep Wrangler? 2009, man, you got a big gap between that. Uh, a lot of things happened on the Wrangler between 09 and 2016. I mean, I think in 2011, the 36 engine showed up in that thing. Uh, you know, as a big switch from, what was it, 37 or the, uh, what else was in the Wrangler? The uh, four liter. 3.8. We even had 3.8, the little bitty V6 3.8 engine in some of the Wranglers. So your window is too huge, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, that Wrangler, I mean, the Wrangler body is pretty much uh, standard, you know, as far as the Wrangler, the Jeep Wrangler. But I assume you're talking about under the hood and, uh, you know, the drivetrain. I assume you're talking about the drivetrain. We went through three transmissions in that. With that big old window you left me, buddy. Uh, three transmission, I assume three engines. So your window is too large, guy. Uh, but good question, man. Uh, I just did a Wrangler. I just put a transmission, a nag transmission, four wheel drive. Oh, that beat me up. Uh, I did not like it at all. Uh, in fact, go watch that video, man. I need that video needs some more views. Y'all go check that video out. And that Wrangler, I put the uh, nag transmission in. But your window too large, buddy. Uh, shorten that window up a little bit so I can uh, squeeze those. Uh, you know, squeeze squeezing in a little bit. Soup. What's going on, man? Soup. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Is it recommended montage? Is it recommended to buy a police interceptor? Police interceptor. Police interceptor. Oh, what time it? I always got a uh, Tom, 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 Tom. Damn, I skipped over Tom. Okay, okay. Let me let me come back to you, buddy. I skipped over some people montage. It. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Okay. Super. Is it recommended to buy a police interceptor? Nathaniel, that's a world engine with Hyundai and Mitsubishi. Yeah, your particular model, model, Nathaniel Rudolph. Uh, yeah, is a world engine. You didn't have the two four, but that okay. You must be referring to that comment I made about uh, I've seen a two four show up on some of the two hundreds. I think it was a twenty fourteen or 
2015, 2015. One of those years it showed up. But yeah, before that, they used the world engine. You're right. Um, and that engine, I have yet to touch, go inside of a world engine. I, I should you not. I have yet to do anything on a world engine but a freaking tune up, spark plugs. I don't know what's with that engine, man. And the weird thing about it is it's disappearing. Go figure. <laughs> the particular engine you have hardly any problem on disappears. I don't get it. But, hey, it is what it is. Tom Cook, two, four burns oil, but won't run long enough to hurt engine. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it start, it start, it's like a... It's like a safety issue, man. <laughs> it's like a safety mechanism. But you know what else is weird about that, Tom? Uh, you hardly ever see the oil, low oil light on or anything from the oil pressure sensor. It's like those are not doing their job. It's like the engine will start cutting off and you will have poor drivability before a warning come on alerting you that you're low on oil. Now, to my recollection or to my knowledge, isn't that the job of the oil pressure switch or oil sending unit is to some way somehow send a signal up to the cluster to turn a light on to alert the driver or the customer that the engine crankcase is low on oil go figure man uh some of the weird things that happen but um uh, it's crazy all right uh that's what's up man uh oj Savit. I got a 2015 town and country, 89,000 miles, been getting 14 to 15 mile per hour. What should I look into getting better mileage? Better fuel economy, better mileage. Man, a lot of things can affect fuel economy, uh, fuel consumption, a lot of things. I'm going to tell you something, man. I used to laugh at this, chuckle at this until I got into the feel and had better or start to gain better understanding of how cars work i'm gonna tell you one of the smallest little thing that you even you might chuckle when i say this that can affect now i ain't saying it's your problem but some of the smallest things can affect fuel economy uh simple stuff such as a uh, uh, low tire pressure low tire pressure i drive for uber right <laughs> i used to drive for uber until i broke my van and uh um uh, yeah, man, a lot of things can, uh, uh, fuel economy or low, uh, yeah, what's the word you use? Better gas. You're trying to get better gas mileage. A lot of things can affect that, man. Uh, let me name off a few after, uh, poor fuel economy. Okay. Some of the things you should look at, uh, it start with the basics, uh, the obvious, uh, simple stuff. Uh, tire pressure. I already mentioned that. Uh, another one is a uh, uh, man air filter. Man, you got the breed. Engine got the breed. Engine got the breed. Uh, if I block your, if I block your face and your nose with a mask with plastic in it, you're not gonna breathe fine, and you're gonna you're gonna poor. You're gonna have poor economy. You're gonna have poor. Everything about you is gonna be poor. So little simple things like uh high pressure air filter start with the basics and work your way on up to uh you know the bigger things uh spark plugs that cause low fuel economy um uh, what else what else what else um uh, spark plugs uh dirty injectors uh you can try some fuel injection cleaner hell you can try some better fuel i mean who knows what you put in last time but I'm going to tell you one thing that uh, back in the day, the computers are more sophisticated now, so it's not uh, so much so now. Uh, O2 sensors used to be the, the biggest or used to be one of the main parts I go to when I'm searching for better fuel economy. O2 sensors has more control over fuel delivery or, you know, how much fuel delivered, how much rich lean. We, we, we're getting out of those terms, rich and lean. We don't, we're not using that as much as we used to, but... The O2 sensor used to be my go-to parts when I'm trying to uh, gain better fuel economy. Okay. Now, due to the fact that they are monitored by the computer, uh, the typical guy is not going to mess with it until they see a fault code, which is understandable. But you got to keep in mind, O2 sensor work like any other sensor. They're not going to set a fault code unless they outside a parameter or window. Let's say this is a window. If that O2 sensor right here, it's still good, but if it jump over here, check engine light time. 
Okay, so what if it's right here and it's on the verge of death? Oh, because they do get lazy. We used to have fall code called O2 Sensor Lazy, just simple as that. They do get lazy, but what if it's lazy and it's right here and it just haven't made it over there yet to turn a check engine light on? Okay, I used to have a rule of thumb, man. Uh, every 60,000 miles, I'd go in with new O2 sensors. I'm not saying you should do that because you can, um, you can start. It can get expensive, okay? Most cars have... Four O2 sensors now, two before the cat and two upstream and two downstream. Let me use the proper terminology. Okay, so uh, yeah, that can get expensive, but I that that, that was all made uh, to answer your question. From my opinion, this is all everything I'm saying is my opinion, guys. Nothing is etched in stone here, so don't take nothing I say with a grain of so You know what I'm saying? It's my opinion. And some of you guys are like, what are your opinions? So I have no problem with revealing my opinion. Um, but yeah, that's that's another uh, thing I would go to as far as uh, oil consumption. But 2015, four, 14 to 15 miles a gallon. Wow. Yeah, that, and that that van likely have a three six engine in it. So um, those spark plugs, without taking the intake off, you can check the rear spark plugs. At least cylinder one and three, you can pull off. Pull it out. Pull one out and take a look at it. If it's a uh, you know, don't if it's not looking too good, just go ahead and replace them all. But uh, a drag on your engine would cause um, poor fuel economy. They say uh, your transmission acting up. You really should scan that thing and see if there's any um, fault codes. And when I say scan, I, I keep, I keep, um, I keep using the wrong terminology because scan. When I say scan, a lot of guys run to a generic scan tool and they plug it up, and they no fault codes some of the fault codes guys are stored in the memory it just haven't done what we call mature enough to turn the light on so you can have false transmission like that real uh big time like that they can that can be a problem in your transmission but you not have a check in the light on so and i'm not saying go out and buy a gazillion dollar scan too i'm just saying you if you're gonna scan your car all you're gonna see from places like AutoZone and advanced auto is generic scan numbers that's visible up front okay that don't the matured codes you're not going to see anything stored you may not i don't know what kind of scan tool they're using but get that thing scan man see if there's any fault codes for, uh in it and, and go from there you know okay uh but 2015 you shouldn't have no that's low 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 nate daniel what's up man uh oh i'm skipping i'm sorry uh Tom Cook, I tried to buy a 2020 caravan with my credit. It's too good for zero percent. So Chrysler can <laughs> Tom, come on, man. Don't be like that, man. We need all the sales we can get, man. Tom, come on, man. Tom, man, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to work on you, Tom, man. I'm sure that poor salesman uh upset by you know I got some uh uh Chrysler FCA salesman watching this this stream, don't you, Tom? You gotta be careful what you say, man. What's up with that? Oh, I skipped over my man. Uh, I skipped over some. Oh, Nate down here. A uh, Google search says the Pentastar is one of the most reliable engines. I'm shocked. Why are you shocked, Nate? Nate Daniel, why are you shocked, man? That is, and, and I think that's that's from uh the current three six. Uh, uh, Nate Nathaniel, Nate Nate. I'm gonna call you Nate. Nate. Uh, you gotta keep in mind there's three generations of the three six. And I'm sure that Google search not talking about the first generation. That's for sure. Because the first generation came out in 2011. <laughs> 2011, 12, 13 all have valve train problems, valve train noise. Now, the engine itself, from a bottom end standpoint, was uh, uh, built tough. Okay? It's just all valve train issues. So, if you read something like that, or Google search says the Pentastar is one of the most reliable engines, I'm almost guaranteed they are referring to the uh, generation three Pentastar. Found in the 2016 Durango, the 2016 Jeep Grand Cherokee, and the 2017 Chrysler Pacifica. All equipped with the Generation 3 Pentastar engine. That is likely what you read in that Google search, which is good news for Chrysler. All right. Appreciate that, Nate. Uh, Edja Zavala. What's happening, man? I got a 2016 Wrangler with the 3.6 Pentastar. 
during a cold start, when I put it in reverse, it stalls out at times. It has 50K on in miles and shifts well while driving. What's the issue? <laughs> well, I don't really know the issue, you know, offhand, just off the top of my head without scanning and checking out. But I can tell you or I can advise you of a few things you can check. Now, and I can't even do that if you're not uh, – you may – I don't know your – I don't know your skill level or anything like that. So I'm assuming you just want to hear some news about it or you want to hear my thoughts on it. Okay, I'm going to put it like that. Because uh, a lot of guys will come over here and they'll say, uh, fellow tech here, blah, 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 blah. And my whole, my whole answer would be totally geared toward, you know, a guy that know what I'm saying. I may use language that he can relate to. Okay, so don't, don't get offended if I... Uh, you know, question your skill level or no skill level, or, you know, I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't, I don't recognize the name. And because I don't recognize the name, I'm sure after you leave this stream or before you leave, you're going to uh, get a video, a thumbs up, by the way, guys, get a video, a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, please, please. I'm trying to hit 10,000, 10 K this month. YouTube sent me a notification saying you should hit 10 K this month. Congratulations. Not sure what I get, but uh, that number alone uh, sounds good to me. So back to you, man. Um, what's happening, man? I got a 2016 Wrangler there. Doing a cold start. When I put it in, put it on reverse, it stalls out at time and cold. Man, that could be anything. That could be a number of things. First thing you got to start with, guys, is uh, scanning that computer, man. Uh, you got to find out if there's any fault codes in it. And again, I'm not always referring to a check engine light. I mean, scanning the computer could be finding out what's in the computer as far as the memory, all of that. Just because you don't have a check engine light doesn't mean your computer doesn't see a problem. Okay, that's not the case. But uh, with the newer cars, guy, everything I do is centered around what I see in the computer. Okay, if that makes sense. Because that is now the new starting point. Back in the day, Everybody had their own particular starting point on where they would start trying to figure out why something run the way it run. I know a guy, you bring him your car, it ain't running right. First thing he pull out is a spark plug. Nothing wrong with that. That's his starting point. But <laughs> due to all the changes that has taken place with uh, cars and the engines and all this computerized stuff, you got to go to the source, which is the computer nowadays first. It's just a fact, man. Uh, I've I've learned to adapt. I mean, I've been in the game a good 20 years, so I've learned to adapt and uh, change my strategy. That's the only way I'm going to stay relevant. You know, if I don't, I'm going to get left behind and eventually out. And I plan on doing this for another, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know. But so you got to you gotta have a starting point, guy. Uh, scan that computer and find out if any code. I mean, your car's new enough to uh, 2016. Yeah, you, that's likely you have uh, flash updates for it uh engine three six yes i know you do okay and depending on the transmission it could be a nag or it could be a eight speed it could be either one uh there are they are there are flash updates uh with that year model truck that will address uh shift improvement and drivability improvement so things like that matters you know i'm not saying getting that done will fix your problem i'm just saying the best place to start for problems like that uh, is looking inside the brain of the car, which is the computer. All right. Good question, Edgar. Uh, again, give the video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe, please, please. Tom, what up, Tom? Yo, I already, Tom, go on, man. I ain't fooling with you no more, Tom. You, you <laughs> 2020, you had a chance to get a 2020, but your credit is too good for 0%. So Chrysler can <laughs> All right, Tom. Uh, I'm about to skip that one, Tom. Um, Vlad Samar. Vlad Samar. Vlad Samarin. Samarin. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. What up, Vlad? Okay, 2011 through 2016. Okay, you give me a better window. Now, you know what that window right there tells me? Uh, it likely has a 3.6 engine in it. So, right off the top, a smaller window can at least let me know one thing. You have a 3.6 engine in it. Which engine is better? What problems to expect under the hood? Now, you 2011, you could have either the 36 or <sighs> shit, man. I have to uh if I go on the um uh, the website we use and I punch in that 
punch in that year model Wrangler. If my only option on the engine part is three six, then that that engine came standard equipped with the Wrangler. So, uh, I don't know what you mean by which engine is better. You either gonna have a three six or a little bitty small three eight. The three eight we used to use in the caravan and the and the the voyages and thing like that. So. Yes, the three eight was still being used in twenty eleven. I want to say, I don't know, Tom. What you think? But uh, the, the the answer to your question is the better engine will be the three six. Okay, you're gonna get better. You're gonna get more horsepower and more everything with a three six over the earlier version three eight. So if you're trying to compare the two, yes, three six. If you got an option on which one to get, yes, get the three six. Okay. Uh, that's what I say. All right. Uh, montage, montages. Uh, man, come on, man. Okay, montages. I have a 2008 Chevy Impala with a 3.9 engine, and it's an ex-military police vehicle. Look it to the shop. Took it to the shop, and recently the fuse box went bad. How do a fuse box go bad? Fuse box just merely opening and closing circuits you know this unless it's a module such as a tip them okay i tip them found on a lot of chrysler products it's the fuse box but it's also a module so but i don't know if uh chevy impala term their few fuse box modules tip them i think chrysler only one has that uh designated name for their uh let me finish reading this uh uh, I have a 2008 Chevy Impala with a 39 and it's ex military police guard. Took it to the shop and recently the fuse box went bad. The fuel pump circuit went bad and I'm buying another fuse. The fuse pump circuit, man, did they have the same problem Chrysler had? Uh, the fuse box went bad, which, which allowed your fuel pump not to run because you say the fuel pump circuit went bad. Oh, the guys, these terminologies is uh, fuel. Fuel pump circuit went bad. What is fuel pump circuit went bad? So basically, you're telling me because your fuse box has an open in it, it's allowing you your fuel pump not to run, which will in turn allow you not to start. I can't make out this comment. I can't make out this. Uh, uh, and I I don't know if it's a question. You don't have a question, my bad. So I I I can assume you're just making a comment. But um, that's interesting. If in 2008, Chevy uh, utilized such a fuse box, you know, and it has control of the fuel pump. Okay, unless the uh, fuel pump relay is housed in that box, and because you say the fuse box went bad, that's allowing your fuel pump not to run. I can't some I'm missing something, man. I'm not sure what I'm missing to make out what you're saying, but uh word it a little better. I probably can uh uh figure out what you're talking about. Nathaniel, what's up, man? Uh see the crazy part is the world engine is still around. The two four is the world engine, but just new components inside. Flat basically uh Fiat basically updated the old world engine, but it's the same. No, man, Nate, listen, man. That world engine that was first introduced uh, had no oil consumption issues, okay? It, it just had no oil. Again, I've never been in one. I didn't replace uh, at least two, maybe three 2.4 engines due to oil consumption, okay? They don't want us fixing them. They don't want us uh, going in putting rings. We, nobody builds engine anymore. We don't even build engines anymore. They, If you got a problem in the bottom end, they wanted you to put a new one. So, Nate, I beg to differ. Those are not the same. And like I say, simply because uh they're not having the same, they know they don't have the same problem. The world engine that first introduced is not burning oil. I don't see any uh oil consumption issues with their world engine. Like I do the 2.4 multi-air engine. Okay, yes, they both size-wise, they both uh 2.4 liter four-cylinder engines, but they made different, they built different. Okay. Man, in fact, uh you hardly see any of those cars, any of those cars with that engine in the shop with engine problem. That's amazing to me how the, the engine held up that well and it's leaving. You know, I don't know. It's crazy, man. So, OJ Savat, thanks. I just want to make sure I'm headed in the right direction. That's what's up, OJ. Hey, for you leave, man, thumbs up. 
Give the video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe. I hope you already subscribe. All right. Soup. What up, Soup? Hey, greetings from Poland. OA Aspen Hemi, four-wheel drive, 50K miles on it. There is some weird vibration on the driver floor, especially between 13, uh, especially between 13 and 1800. Uh, weird vibration. Man, you got this is an all-wheel drive. Man, that could be anything, dude. If it's an all-wheel drive, you're likely going to have a PTU, a power transfer unit, uh, formerly known, well, not formerly known, a transfer case. I mean, they 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 do the same thing, but they difference in a lot of other things. Okay, man, you gonna catch hell, dude. You gonna whoever working on it or chasing that problem because there's so many moving parts underneath the bottom of that car. I don't know if it's all all time all wheel drive, meaning all four wheels run at the same time all the time. In other words, you can't shut it. It ain't like a four wheel drive unit. You can turn it on and off. Give me two wheels or give me four, but uh that vibration i mean you got you got drive axles under there that could be out of balance you got uh <laughs> you got hope maybe you got axles in the front that's going to both front wheels that could be out of balance oh man you hate it for i ain't trying to scare you but uh it's gonna be rough for hard finding that vibration but because it happened at 13 1800 rpm uh i assume moving yeah, I, I assume 13 to 1800. If you can feel that sitting still, I don't think you can get that high. RPM will let you get that high. Your rev limit might kick in. I don't know. But uh, I don't even, I'm not sure how you're going to even isolate that, especially if it's an all, all time uh, uh, four wheel drive setup. But it's a lot of moving parts under that guy. So. Last time I was tracking, chasing one of those problems, I had to have a guy, well, I had to have him drive while I roam around in the rear trying to find the exact spot. We get it up to a certain speed and RPM, and I can, you can hear the rumble. So I'm searching on my ear to the floor trying to find out what part of the car. I mean, it could be the differential. It could be anything, man. Uh, yeah, this it's one of those, man, where um, uh, verbal – answer is not going to help you buddy because uh the guy that's giving the verbal answer uh uh don't know nobody knows you know without driving and uh diagnosing it so you're gonna need a uh you're gonna need a, a partner or somebody to drive with you and somebody you know listen things like that okay um uh, soup very small up and down play on the front shaft felt rather on transfer case output than the joint could this be a torque converter tc i guess you tc inside a transfer case it's very well could be it could be it could be a number of things that's what i'm saying um could this be the tc inside a transfer case many thanks for your video uh, man hey man i appreciate you watching them man i hope you uh subbed up and uh gave the video a thumbs up but uh tc baron yeah it could be anything man i can't single one thing out you know without me driving it you know, I will be doing you and myself a disservice by rambling off guesses. You know, so only thing I can do is sum it up. I said it could be a number of things. You know, I don't want to put myself out there or lead you in the wrong direction with a, a guest answer. And that's all I would be doing if I throw just verbal part names at you. I will be rambling, talking, because how would I know or how could I know without actually driving? Only thing I knew is like advise you some things to check, and you sound like you're on the right track. Uh, you said uh, very small up and down play on the front shaft felt rather on transfer case. Uh, yeah, you're gonna play it by ear, man. You got to, um, you got to um, try some isolation. You got to <laughs> maybe move some things. Uh, maybe you know balance out a new drive shaft or install a new drive shaft and then tr uh try i had this problem on a uh a charger or was it yeah was it a charger a rear wheel drive the drive axle was giving off all kinds of crazy noises and vibration i mean i replaced it and the noise went away i can't say that's your problem but you know you're gonna have to start um uh, you know with the obvious uh man it tires it's it's like so many things that can cause that man so good luck to you buddy on that i'm sorry i can't be of any help as far as um you know what i can say john pashan what is going on man zf8 hp70 was rated number one transmission by car and driver oh really 
Check out videos on the teardown functions. Energy transfer layout. Seriously impressive engineer. Man, I just tore one of those apart. I pulled one out of a uh, 1500. Uh, of course, it's going to the scrapyard, but I decided to tear it apart. Last time I went in one, John, was in, in school, the training center. Okay. <laughs> and go figure. There's no parts to overhaul it or repair it. Um, only thing I've repaired on it is the valve body, but uh, I've been inside one at the school and I actually just tore one apart at the job. Actually, to shoot a video, on, I decided to uh, tear it apart and discuss it. And I've got who knows when I edit that and get it out to you guys to, to watch. But uh, rated number one via number one transmission by car and driver. I'm going to have to read up on that, man. I had to get I got to get subscribed to that magazine. Uh, I heard it be some good articles in there. And there's some things in there I can discuss and talk about. Uh, appreciate that, John. Hey, get a video. Thumbs up, John. Appreciate you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Z Hakasa. Man, I cannot pronounce that. But. You see where I'm at. You see where I'm going. Okay, guys. Oh, I got like uh, maybe 15 minutes, 15 more minutes. Hey, JT, I am getting a B212D RRC code. Ignition run only circuit open. Circuit open 2015 Durango 360. Anything I can do. Uh, ignition run input circuit open, which means the circuit is open. 2016 Dodge Durango 36. Well, uh, what what was that? I have seen? I think I've seen this code recently. I'm not sure. It wasn't a Durango. No, I mean the 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 name of the code or the the problem uh, was related. It was an open circuit, run only, input circuit open. Okay, now I'm gonna ask you something crazy. Uh, and I don't know even know if your scan tool would tell you this. Uh, what I was gonna say is uh, is that code active or stored? Because that's a different. If it's active. That makes it a lot easier to uh, trace and find. Okay, if it's stored, that those are the ones that drive you cuckoo because it could be intermittent. Um, I don't know what is it doing. Is it making your car not start, or you just have an airbag light on? How is a guy supposed to change the PCV valve on a Durango with a big ass harness <laughs> tied? <laughs> what engine you got in this? Uh... <laughs> The PCV valve on a big ass uh, Durango with a big ass harness tied into it. I don't know, man. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, I, I plead the fifth. I ain't answering that, man. Go on, man. Uh, first of all, I don't know what engine you got, uh, but uh, that's great. That's funny, man. That's funny. I needed that chuckle. Needed that laugh. Vlad tomorrow did already, man. Oh, appreciate you, Vlad. I appreciate it, man. Like I say, guys, I'm trying to hit that 10k mark, so. Um, uh, just a milestone, another milestone. Okay. Uh, I love milestones and I love, uh, I like what I do, man. I, I keep knocking myself in the head guys for not starting this good five years ago. I've always had a knack for, if you look on my page, my YouTube channel, I have, I've been into music videos. I do weddings. I do a whole, whole list of things and I've done, uh, the, I do drive, drive, uh, ride share. I've done ride share. So I did videos on ride share on my ride share journey. I've done, I've always had a knack for, I just never thought to implement it until first of all, I didn't think my, uh, you know, your language got to be on point. You know, I had to clean up my language, clean up my verbal, uh, clean up my speaking. Okay. It's cause people will criticize the hell out of you uh, for misspell word. Thank God for a spell checker. Oh my goodness. So a lot of things I had to clean up. You know what's funny about that? Uh, I used to work for uh, Just Answers. I think that's Just Answers where, you know, you log in and uh, people ask you a bunch of questions, but they, they keep most of the profit off of the money. I mean, you can make some money. You just got to answer and you got to have a high success rate. Uh, they gave me sample dummy questions that I didn't even know wasn't coming from customer just to see how my, well, I wasn't speaking, but how my punctuation how my spelling and the way i answer questions they sent out dummy questions to me just to find out how i answered them as far as the sentence do i use complete sentence do i put the periods where they're supposed to be do i put the commas all that was secretly checked okay now you know i 
I managed to get through all the cracks and all that, but it's just amazing me and uh how important that type of stuff is. Okay, you're speaking as far as you're typing, and you'll if you can put a sentence together and make common sense of what you're trying to say, uh, with your answers, all of that matters. And uh, I didn't realize how important that was until I uh, got my own channel and got beat up a couple of times by a couple of guys that uh, uh, I thought was cool. <laughs> now, from time to time, I still misspeak. That ain't that. That's not going to change. I'm going to misspeak. I mean, cause, because I go off the fly. I don't have a screen right here with a teleprompter on it. OK, so I'm going to misspeak. I'm human. It happens. All right, I got to finish this up, guys. That was my call. That was my cue. Uh I don't even know where I left off at, but yeah. Uh, Jonera Tier just subscribed yesterday. You do good videos straight to the point. I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you watching. Appreciate you subscribing. Appreciate all of that good stuff. I really appreciate it, man. I really do. Uh, I got to wrap this up, guys. Let me take these last three. Oh, God, I'm just strolling down. There's like six more on there. So I'm going I'm to answer these quickly, man. So don't charge it to my, to my, uh, you know how they say them uh, church folks say, uh, Nate, what's going on, Nate? Uh, friend just bought a 2013 Dodge Dart. Service trans light is on. One Ford Turbo with dry. Oh, man, that transmission. Oh. <laughs> Why didn't he get one with a nine speed like yours, Nate? Okay, anyway, um, service trans light is on. One Ford Turbo with du dry dual clutch transmission. The, the Fiat Abart engine. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Nate, well, well I find out the code for me, Nate. Find out the fault code. Uh, I, I ran into a couple of those uh, where, well, it all depends. It depends on the fault code, okay? But uh, that Dart was a fairly inexpensive car. In fact, I'm looking for one for my daughter, okay? Because, you know, the PT days are over, uh, so she wants something more modern. She said a PT looked like a Hertz. She don't want to ride it no more. So I'm about to find some like a 200 or a dart or something like that. And you can get those fairly cheap, fairly cheap. All right. I got to rush through the rest of these guys. Edgar Zavala. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. I usually try to work on my car. So I have a pretty decent knowledge plan on doing all my rock arms soon about the trans with 50 K. When should I get it serviced? Uh, I typically do those. I don't, I can't remember what you got or what you, what kind of car is it or what you're working on. But if it's a, um, the typical six-speed uh, transmission or a nag, I typically tell people between 50 and 60. If it's a nine-speed or eight-speed ZF, anything like that, uh, according to Chrysler, never. Never, ever, 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 ever. That's according to Chrysler. They say it's a feel for life, but uh, you take matters into your own hands when you're out of warranty. If you're still under warranty, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't fool with it because – in their eyes, no matter what you do, you put the wrong fluid in it, and they can deny your claim based on that. Based on that assumption, you don't really know unless you analyze the fluid. So that's a big process. So uh, I, you left out what kind of transmission it is. Like I said, if it's sixty-two, I typically fifty to sixty, or if it's a nag, fifty to sixty. But anything ZF or you know, it's fit. Those are feel for life. Extra. I want to do a whole flush, but also drop the pan and change the filter. Should I go with that? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. You'll be able to pull off two birds and one stone. Uh, the goal behind a flush, supposedly, to get all the fluid out, every last drop. Okay. Now, to me, that's uh, reliant on the equipment used, the machine used. Who knows? Some of the shops got the good machine, but some of the techs don't utilize it the proper way. So it depends on the tech, the guy that's doing it, and the machine. Okay. But uh, going... Going both routes, I ain't gonna lie, it can be expensive, okay? But you get getting to change the filter by doing the service route, and you're getting to change all the fluid by doing the flush. So that is the best way to go. The most expensive way, but the best way, guys. So uh, kudos to you, buddy. John Pashan. My only complaint on serviceability of the ZF7 is the inability to manually open the thermal bypass valve at lower needed temp doing fluid change so you can drain and change all lines and heat core. Yeah, they <laughs> accessibility was not one of their big points uh when they uh got this set up, man. Let me run through the rest of these guys because I gotta I gotta wrap this up. I have a 2013 Durango with tapping rock on problem. It has 172k 
Should I replace the engine for an engine 80k or replace the rock? Dude, that depends on your pocketbook, man. Uh 2013 Durango with tapping noise. You want to know should he replace the engine or repair the rock arm? Depending on your pocketbook. I can assume repairing the valve train not going to be as expensive as replacing the engine, but the risk and danger in that is knowing for sure or for certain that the valve train issue is your problem. Okay. And it's all a crapshoot until you do what we call tear down. All right. You essentially need to take the valve covers off, inspect the valve train assembly. Or you can do, I got a patent called uh, the field test uh, where you feel the rock arms. In fact, I'm going to link that video All right, right here. Go watch that video. I call it the JT Pinnastar field test. This is how I check for broken rock arms. And I explained to you the importance of uh, that camshaft lobe not being on the rocker arm doing testing. All that's explained in the video, but go watch that. So, but the answer to your question is depends on your pocketbook, how much you want to spend. Now, uh, the average person usually go the cheapest route, but is the cheapest route the better route? You will likely take away all guesswork if you get another engine, but that route is more expensive. So, back to my statement, original statement, it depends on your pocketbook, guy. All right, I got to wrap this up. Zexfail, what's going on, man? Ain't seen you in a minute. You have any ideas on oil? Feel the cartridge media being squashed. Normally, it's not charging oil, or normally, it's not changing oil often enough. But I didn't think I went too far over 3K. Do I have any ideas on oil filter cartridge media being squashed in, sucked in, or uh, uh, squashed in, squashed in, squashed in? Uh, but I didn't think I went too far over 3K. It, I don't think that matters. I mean, 3K is just the typical uh, time they say you should change your oil. I don't think going over will cause any, I mean, as far as the oil being diluted, yeah, but as far as mechanical, like a cartridge being squashed in. Oh, God, I can't make out what you're saying. Uh, I don't even know what kind of car this is. But X man, you came in on the tail end, man. Let me let me let me uh hop on there when I get off the stream. Okay. Uh I gotta wrap these up so I can go. Um uh, dang. What did I leave out? Guys, but all right, I'm wrapping it up, guys. So um uh, th these are the last comments I'm gonna try to uh speak on. All right. Uh Salah fished away. How hard is it to RPE? Come on, man. <laughs> How hard is it to RP? Uh, oh, replex, replace the flex plate. Replace. Okay. You got another comment right below that, so I'll do that one. Hey, brother, love your videos. You have helped me fix my 03 PT Cruiser GT myself and save me lots of money. Patches 7192. You the man. Thanks for watching the videos, guy. Uh, I can only assume you already sub because you said love your videos so i assume you already sub, uh, sub, sub subscribe so give this video a thumbs up while you have uh patches and i appreciate you watching man real talk i appreciate that man i appreciate that from the bottom of my heart solid fish the way how hard is it to replace a flex plate on a 2015 grand cherokee in my driveway dude come on man in your driveway do you know what entails replacing a flex plate first of all the axles got to come out just to gain access to the transmission, which means the transmission has to come out to gain access to the flywheel, flex plate, whichever one you want to call it, which is in between the engine and the transmission. It is extremely hard to do that in your driveway. I don't even care if you got the proper jacks. Everything is not do-it-yourself, guys, okay? I had, to, uh, I had to refrain from saying a lot of stuff I say because... Uh, some of my videos I make look easy and, you know, cats would look at it and go, man, that's easy. I do my own. And they do it. And um, I got a couple of bad emails. I got a couple of cuss me out emails. You said, you said. Everything is not do it yourself, guys. So take the videos with a grain of salt. Take it for what it's worth. The reason it looks easy because I have done a bunch of them. Okay. Uh, I just make it look easy. I need to stop doing it. I got to find a better way to explain what I'm doing so you guys won't automatically think 
you can do that. I don't want you to stop thinking you can do something. I just want you to be in the right frame of mind if you try to tackle it and, you know, have that extra, you know, precaution, you know, in effect, if something go wrong, because yes, something can and probably will go wrong. All right. I got to wrap this up. Uh, don't do that in your driveway, buddy. <laughs> I, I'm a seasoned veteran mechanics and I don't think I would tackle that. Oh, uh, no. All right, I got to go, man. Rough play. Hopefully, when you hit 10K, you'll put a new bed. Man, don't start, man. Don't tell me you still hear that. I heard it the other day, man. I ain't going to lie. I got four of them. I got one at the very top of, of the ceiling. I got to get a ladder to get that out. That one's going to be the pain. And that's the one they keeping up all the racket. This this house is this. Yeah, I just heard it again. <laughs> this house ceiling go like this, and whoever used to. Whoever built the house put a uh, a long story. Well, rough play. Thank you for jumping on the stream, man. I'm just messing with you. Uh, uh, hey, get a video a thumbs up, rough. Uh, I assume you already subscribed. Okay, guys, I gotta go. Um, <laughs> Nate, what's up, Nate? <laughs> Nate, man, Nate must be in the house quarantining. Nate, what state you in, Nate? Because here in Georgia, we 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 allowed to go outside, but uh. Nobody's going anywhere because everybody's scared. So a lot of people in the house on the computer or watching the TV. But uh, what's going on, Nate? I'm saying I think they ruined it. According to everyone I ever ask, it's the same engine, just new parts. Like it's only 10 more horsepower <laughs> and four more pounds feet of torque. I could be wrong. I don't know. I, I'm not going to disagree with you because I don't know the actual numbers. But uh <laughs> He comparing y'all. By the way, he comparing the uh, the two four world engine with the two four multi air engine. Okay, uh, according to Nate, the two four multi air would give you ten more horsepower along with four more uh, foot pound of torque. So I mean, is it worth is it worth taking a risk buying the two four multi air, knowing they got a uh, all consumption issue? And by the way, let me stop laughing because it's serious. The oil consumption issue has been rectified, guys. You you shouldn't see that problem. On, I want to say 2018 and up. Okay, uh, bad vendors, man. Just like anything else, just like the rock arms on the three six. Uh, the vendors that built the rock arm, they wasn't quality, high quality enough. It has nothing to do with fully synthetic. I use Pinzor W five twin. It has nothing to do with any of that. Sh- the rock arms was just made crappy and they coming apart. Okay. Fully synthetic. Don't get me wrong. I ain't trying to belittle what oil anybody uses because oil is very important in the long life and longevity of your car. Okay. Yes. Synthetic oil is way better than the regular convention oil. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that's not the reason why your rock arms fail because you wasn't using. In fact, the recommendation for what all to use is actually 5w20 depending on the year so uh if they if engine when engineers put their engine together and they deem necessary that uh 5w20 synthetic was the recommended oil they would have said that and put it on the cap so it's not that is uh it helps let me put it that way it helps the life of the engine but it's not essential it's not required it's not going to Stop your rocker arms from coming apart and giving you ticket noise, okay? So it has nothing to do with freaking oil. It's the vendors. Same with the uh the two four multi air engine. Uh whoever it's just a it's a long story, and I don't have time. Uh wow, it's 58 minutes. I supposed to go one hour and out. All right, Nate, you off limit. No more questions from you, Nate. No more comments from you either. <laughs> all right, uh, I ain't gonna be able to get all these guys. So let me uh let me uh let me uh Victor Aravella, what's going on, buddy? Uh hope everything all right with you, man. Thumbs up, thumbs up the video, guys. Uh finally you admit to it. <laughs> thumbs up the video, guys. I'm gonna wrap this up on that note. There's one more here. Uh man, I wish I lived in an open state like Georgia. I'd hit the town, the town tonight. That's what's up, man. Uh, when did they fix? The rock arm issue, or ne- did they never did? 5477 Harriet. That's the last one I'm going to speak on. When did they fix the rock arm issue, or did they ever, or did they never did? Y'all know what I'm trying to say. When did they fix it? I will say this, uh, 5477 Harriet. Y'all in these names. Uh, as far as, I wouldn't say they fixed 
the issues with the same used rocker. I would say they upgraded the valve train on the 3.6. So I'm a, if you want to say that's a fix, then so be it. Yes, the valve train issue has been upgraded uh, with the 3.6 engine. And that upgrade came on starting with the 2016 Dodge Durango Jeep Grand Cherokee and the 2017 Chrysler Pacifica minivan. So everything with the Generation 3 Pentastar engine has the new upgraded valve train DVT system. Okay, no ticking whatsoever. All of that has been rectified. I guess they got new vendors. I guess they got quality parts now, guys. So that should answer your question, man. Oh, uh, guys, man, I appreciate it. Y'all chiming in. Guys, please, 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 please get the video a thumbs up before you leave. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, and uh, I thank y'all for watching, man. I was I was supposed to come on here and answer some questions in that uh that Pentastar engine I did with the cutaway view showing y'all the timing, but people just start jumping in and asking questions. And I like to deal with live people. That's why, that's why I always say, man, if you're gonna ask a question, please be subscribed, man. That just that just get my that just motivates me to jump on a question or comment and answer, man. If I if I can visually see you subscribe, it's on. It is on. Okay, but I got to go, man. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Let me get out of here. I got my outro set up. Y'all know how I do when I'm on a regular video, so I can do it on stream now, guys. Y'all see what I'm saying? Uh, I'm out, guys.